Hello my friend, welcome to another episode of Camping in Cars. Today I'm testing out the Toyota Tundra. Could this be the ultimate overlander for the everyday adventurer? Let's find out. First, I wanna thank Four Wheel Campers for letting me borrow their brand new truck. Well, it was brand new until I uh, took it mudding, drove it through a snowstorm, took it to the sand dunes, tried to see how high I could jump it. Oh yeah, I did some donuts too. But I'd really appreciate it if you're not telling me this time or else they're not gonna let me borrow their trucks anymore. I just wanted to get myself in, you know, all the situations you might find yourself in before I gave you this review. And I really wish I could stand here and talk smack on Toyota and make all the internet Toyota fanboys rage. But honestly, I don't have anything bad to say. Toyota makes some of the most reliable trucks on the market. And that's all thanks to that 6.7 liter turbo diesel power stroke under the hood. Let's check it out. Oh, I guess I was wrong. This only has a twin turbo six cylinder 3.4 liter engine with 389 horsepower and 479 foot pounds of torque. It'll get your girlfriend to the mall. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It'll get you all the way up here. Top of a mountain. Okay, okay, okay. Enough of the jokes. This truck actually rips off-road. If you watch my channel, you know that I like big trucks and they usually come with solid front axles. This one does not, which makes it right out of the gate more comfortable to drive, a better daily driver, less jarring off-roading it. But what actually makes this Tundra more like a super Tundra at trail riding is the full suspension modifications they did to it. It has a full Dobinson IMS suspension swap with rear heavy load coils in the back designed to carry 700 pounds over stock. Moving down to the wheels and the tires. These are 18 inch method 305 in bronze and everyone and their grandmother runs these wheels right now. There's nothing special about them. If I were to get another set of method wheels, I'd probably look into getting a set with their bead grip technology. But honestly, I've been looking around on the market for what else is out there. I love these tires. These are Falcon AT3W all terrain tires. And I love these tires because they're three peak snow rated, which means they're great for snowstorms. I've driven through so many blizzards in them and never had problems. I'm towing out sprinter vans right and left. <laughs> this one right here is a 295-70 R18. So it's about a 34.3 inch tire. I would continue to use the Falcon Wild Peak tires. I think they're a lot quieter than the competitors that a lot of people use, the BFG tires. That's just my opinion. Some people like different tires for their own reasons, but so far it's always been a reliable tire for me. You'll also see these CBI rock sliders that have been powder coated black to match the front bumper that I'll show you over here. Up front, you'll see the CBI Adventure Series front bumper with the Baja Design Squadron lighting and then the Come Up Slim Series 12.5 RS winch right up front, which was actually designed to pull sprinter vans out of ditches. Maybe we should test it out online. Check out those colors, green and tan. What do we think about them? So as you can see down here, these are the airbags. They're sitting in a cup. Um, typically with airbags, they're not going to be sitting in a cup. They're bolted to the actual frame. This cup allows the axle to articulate and move around when you're going over different terrain. Otherwise, if it's not sitting in this cradle, it's going to restrict movement of the axle. And then that causes the airbags to tear. That renders your airbags useless. In my bigger trucks, I usually have a leaf spring, which is a lot stiffer. This has a rear coil, which allows a lot more movement as well. It also just makes the ride a lot more cushy. In an ideal world, you would just get rear coil springs that are adjusted for the weight of your rig. The only time this would come in handy though is if you're towing really heavy amounts. So in that case, you would still want airbags. Let's go. I'm ripping down a washboard road right now. The suspension so smooth I can drive way faster than I would be able to in my F-250 and Hawk setup that I have currently. I'm like floating. <laughs> it's not neck jarring. I don't have a headache after I drive it. Really, it just feels like a daily driver. 
that's what's so great about it. Welcome inside the cockpit of the Toyota Tundra. It's pretty nice in here. Still resembles a spaceship. The only thing I don't like is this huge distracting front screen. Probably could have done away with that. But other than that, the interior's nice and sleek. Rubber floor mats for those muddy, messy adventures because you can just spray them down. In the front console, you'll find all the fun gizmos and gadgets, including those booty heaters and booty coolers. Another thing I don't love about the Toyota trucks is the back seat area. It's a little small. Overall, it will make your wheelbase shorter, which can be a benefit for off-roading and overlanding, but it takes away from your storage space. And if you're trying to seat full-size adults back there, it can get a little cramped. I hopped in the back to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I have the front seat set for a full-size adult. I'm a little under 5'7", and as you can see, there's not a whole lot of knee room. Especially if you have gear back here at all, you're also losing more space. On the back, you'll see a Hawk four-wheel camper, which is actually the same four-wheel camper I've used on my F-250 the past several years. Combining it with the Toyota Tundra creates what I call the Swiss Army knife of overlanding rigs. For 90% of people, it's the perfect combination. No, it's not the most extreme, but most people aren't looking for the most extreme. It's great because it's a perfect daily driving truck. It's comfortable. You can tow with it, haul with it, work with it during the week, throw the camper in the back, and then go on an adventure on the weekends. Let's take a look around the other side and I'll show you all the features. Let's go. First and foremost, you'll see this awesome side window that I do not have. It lets in a ton of natural light. Above it, you'll see the Fiamma awning that you can use on those rainy days. If you look up to the top of the camper, you can see three lights that will help light up your campsite when you're setting up. You'll also see down here, I call this my pizza propane storage area. Mine's in a different spot, but inside you'll find the propane tanks. And I like this because I can pull one out and use it for my portable pizza oven. Moving right along to the other side of the camper, up top you'll see the fill area for your 20 gallon fresh water tank. Down below you'll see the Truma water heater. Right here you can see where you can attach your exterior outdoor shower, which is one of my favorite features. This is a nice little storage area for knickknacks or dirty gear. This is for the Truma heater or furnace. And lastly, where you can optionally hook up to shore power. It's kind of hard to see, but on the roof, you'll also find roof racks and a solar panel. Now let's hop inside. Welcome inside the Hawk Slide-In Truck Camper. If you watch my YouTube videos, you've seen inside my own four-wheel camper, which is also a Hawk, but this one might look different, and that's because this is the side dinette version, which is a nice change because you have more room east to west. It's a lot more open this way. One downfall about this layout is you cannot get a built-in shower like you can with the front dinette. There are other layouts to choose from though, so if you want to check them out, you can always check them out on their website. But they also just introduced some really awesome new features, which I've been patiently awaiting to tell you about. There are several, but my favorites are, first being the option for electronic roof lift assist. And there's two different versions. One being on all of their brand new campers, and it'll be on the exterior of the camper, and you turn your key and the roof will actually lift. The second version is for the older campers where they'll retrofit an option inside the camper right here on the ceiling, and it will also lift the roof. There's also the option for roof mounted 12 volt AC along the ceiling, which is amazing for those hot days where the fans just won't cut it. It will replace this rear fan. They've come out with new insulation options. There's new under bed storage. It used to only be available for the flatbed models. Now there are additional models you can get it in, including the slide in. Other than that, some of the features in here are pretty similar to my camper. You still have a nice open countertop with a sink and a propane stove. This is a two burner one and it's also flush mount, which is also an exciting announcement. They're starting to use these as default in a lot of their campers. You have a fridge over here. This is the smaller version. I have the 130 liter. You have this nice seating space to sit down. Behind it is the really nice long window. So you can sit here, enjoy lunch and enjoy the view. Get some natural light in here. Behind me is the bed that pulls out the same way as mine. Whew. 
As you can see, this comes out really far. You can get the king optional slide out, so it's really large. And then you just place these additional cushions, and then this whole area becomes a great place to sleep, hang out, study, read, you know, all the fun things. You see the Victron Energy battery monitor, some plugs, some storage under the sink, and more storage down here, fuse box and power controls. Here you'll find all the controls for the lighting. This is to turn the water pump on and off. This is the battery monitoring, and this is the fresh water levels. Here's the Truma furnace and the power options. Also, there's some storage, not a whole lot, but a little bit above here. You have this nice little organizer right there. Storage here, storage under here. Another big storage compartment under the seat. There's always lots of questions about bathrooms. There is an optional upgrade in the four-wheel campers for a built-in toilet. This one does not have that upgrade, but that's okay because there are still a lot of portable toilet options that you can use in these things. And stick one right down here. In this space down here, there's a little cubby out of the way. I believe you can also turn this side dinette into an additional sleeping area. So not only would you have this huge sleeping area up top, but you have an optional sleeping area down below. All in all, I would give this truck and truck camper a campability score of a nine out of 10. This truck is the perfect size. It's not too big, it's not too small. It's a great daily driver, but you can also throw on a truck camper and get to your favorite spot in the mountains and enjoy that cup of coffee all by yourself. In the back, you have this nice, slide in that is easy to haul around it's not heavy there's lots of space you can sleep in here you can cook in here you can stay warm in here and you can shower outside and i think that about wraps it up thanks so much for joining me i hope this video is helpful stay tuned for next week's adventure and merry christmas